Worst guest behavior at your wedding story? Story one. My mom has always been a bit of a wild card, especially when it comes to her moods. They can swing from high to low without any clear reason, leaving us all on edge trying to guess what might set her off. On the day of my wedding, she got really upset about something. To this day, the best we can figure is that she might have been angry that my sister, my sister-in-law, my only bridesmaids, and I got our hair done that morning without her. Or maybe it was because she wasn't invited to the bachelorette party. But neither of those things were planned by me, so it felt unfair to be punished for them. As the day went on, her mood cast a shadow over the celebration. She stone-faced every family photo, barely spoke to me, and spent most of the reception crying somewhere off to the side, with my dad trying to console her. To add another layer of confusion, we think she might have made her brother apologize for his speech at the wedding, but none of us understood why he felt it was inappropriate in the first place. My sister was especially worried this could happen again at her wedding, which put a lot of stress on her. The whole situation made us realize just how unpredictable our mom could be, and it left us all a bit anxious. The bachelor and bachelorette parties were held the night before the wedding, which in hindsight was a terrible idea. Everyone was hammered, and in the haze of alcohol-fueled bravado, someone dared my soon-to-be husband to sit on a cactus. He tried to fake it, but ended up falling and actually sitting on it. So there I was, on the morning of our wedding, hung over and meticulously picking cactus spikes out of his butt with tweezers. Looking back, it's hilarious. But at the time, it was just another layer of chaos on an already tumultuous day. Despite everything, we made it through. My husband and I exchanged vows, and for all the mishaps, there were moments of pure joy. Like when my little niece, the flower girl, dumped her entire basket of petals in one go and then proudly walked down the aisle with an empty basket, or when my dad gave his speech and brought everyone to tears with his heartfelt words. We danced, we laughed, and we celebrated our love, surrounded by friends and family who, despite the drama, were there to support us. The day wasn't perfect by any means, but it was ours. And now, with some distance, even the cactus incident has become a favorite story to tell at gathering. My husband, always a good sport, laughs about it too, and it's become one of those quirky memories that bond us even more. Story two. So, there was this wedding that will forever be etched in my memory, and not necessarily for the reasons you'd hope. It involved one of my old fraternity brothers, and let me tell you, it was the stuff of legends, but not the good kind. The ceremony itself started off beautifully, with the bride looking radiant and the groom beaming with happiness. It was a picturesque day, one that everyone hoped would go off without a hit. But then, in walks my old frat brother, already visibly tipsy. Now, we've all had our wild times in college, but he took it to a whole new level that day. Things went downhill quickly. At the reception, he downed drinks like water, escalating from merry to belligerent in no time flat. He was stumbling around, slurring his words, and then, out of nowhere, he picked a fight with the groom. You could see the horror on everyone's faces as he started yelling and shoving. And then, if you can believe it, he turned his wrath on the bride. She was trying to calm things down, but he wasn't having it, screaming at her and making a scene. The situation could not get worse, right? Wrong. The pastor, who was the picture of patience, tried to step in and defuse the situation. But my frat brother, in his drunken stupor, decided that was the perfect time to spit his chewing tobacco on the pastor's. You could almost hear a collective gasp from the crowd. If that wasn't enough, during a quiet moment in the ceremony, when everyone was supposed to be solemn and reflective, he let out the loudest, most obnoxious fart. It echoed in the silence. And while some people stifled giggles, others were mortified. I mean, who does that? At the reception, the guy was like a bull in a china shop, but with cows. He somehow managed to break a bunch of cow-shaped decorations that were part of a rustic display. It was a mess, with shattered ceramic pieces everywhere. The poor bride was on the verge of tears, and the groom looked like he was ready to punch him. When he finally decided it was time to leave, he realized he had no idea where his ride was. He stumbled around, trying to call someone, but with his state, it was a lost cause. Eventually, someone took pity on him and got him a ride home, but the damage was done. You'd think he'd wake up the next day with a crushing hangover and a huge sense of regret, but it took him half a year to apologize to the groom. That's right, six months before he even acknowledged the chaos he'd caused. When he finally did, it was more of a begrudging, yeah, sorry about that, rather than a heartfelt apology. Story 3 Working in hotels for seven years, I've seen my fair share of wild stories, but nothing quite compares to the New Year's Eve wedding that went completely off the rails. As the head of security, I've had to handle a lot, but this one took the cake. It all started when the groom realized he'd left his wallet on the head table, only for it to vanish. Not the best start to a wedding reception, but hey, we're trained to deal with these things. Then, 
The night took a turn for the worse when I got a call to the restaurant bar to deal with a very intoxicated gentleman causing a scene. When I arrived, one of the bridesmaids was absolutely livid, screaming at this drunk guy. I tried to calm her down, getting the rundown from the bartender. That's when I learned Mr. Drunkface, as I started calling him in my head, had a credit card that didn't belong to him. My security guard was already hauling him off, and I told him to call the cops. While trying to soothe Mr. Drunkface's distraught girlfriend, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. From the windows, I saw the elevator doors open, and out tumbled six groomsmen and the groom, all decked out in their classy white tuxedos. They stormed into the bar with a mission. At that moment, everything clicked into place. Mr. Drunkface had the groom's wallet. Case closed. But before I could even process the thought, the groom walked right up to the guy and decked him. No words, no warnings, just a solid punch to the face. The cops arrived shortly after, arresting Mr. Drunkface while his girlfriend sobbed and caused more drama. The wedding party, having dispensed their own form of justice, returned to their ballroom. Mr. Drunkface couldn't even buy a drink with the stolen credit card because he was already too drunk. Then he got punched in the face by the groom, and then he got arrested. He spent the night in jail, a fitting end to his disastrous evening. Meanwhile, the hotel staff and I had to manage the aftermath. The bride was understandably upset, but she tried to focus on the festivities. The bridesmaid, who had been screaming at Mr. Drunkface, calmed down and joined the rest of the party. It was as if the entire wedding had hit a speed bump and then continued on its way, determined to salvage the night. As the head of security, I couldn't help but marvel at the absurdity of it all. Here we were, on what was supposed to be one of the most elegant nights of the year, dealing with a drunk thief and a vigilante groom. Yet, in the end, it was just another night in the life of hotel security. The following morning, as the wedding guests slowly checked out, I saw the groom and his groomsmen again. They were a bit worse for wear, but in surprisingly good spirits. The groom even gave me a nod of thanks. I guess in a strange way, we'd bonded over the chaos of the previous night. Story 5 So, my dad's employee was getting married, and of course, we got invited to the wedding reception. It was one of those casual yet special affairs where you could feel the love and effort that went into planning it. The smell of smoked brisket wafted through the air, making everyone eager for dinner. As the afternoon turned into evening, People started gathering around the smoking area, drawn by the delicious aroma. Among them was this lady, comfortably settled into a lawn chair with a beer in hand. She seemed quite content just chilling there, sipping her drink and chatting with anyone who wandered over. She pretty much stayed planted in that lawn chair the entire time, exchanging laughs and stories, clearly enjoying the laid-back vibe. Every now and then, she'd get up to grab another beer, but mostly she was just part of the scenery, a friendly face among the guests, blending into the relaxed atmosphere of the evening. It wasn't until dinner was served that things took a turn. Everyone began to move towards the tables set up under a large canopy, and that's when she finally stood up. As she rose, the wet spot on her pants became glaringly obvious. She had gotten so drunk that she hadn't even noticed she'd wet herself right there in her lawn chair. There was an awkward silence as people noticed, followed by a mix of embarrassed chuckles and sympathetic looks. She seemed blissfully unaware or too intoxicated to care which was probably for the best in that moment. A couple of guests, clearly her friends, quickly ushered her away, trying to salvage some dignity and get her cleaned up. Despite the little hiccup, the dinner proceeded, and the smoked brisket was every bit as mouth-watering as it had promised to be. People started to relax again, the incident with the lady becoming a part of the evening's lore rather than a disruption. Conversations resumed, and laughter filled the air once more. I have to hand it to the newlyweds. They didn't let anything phase them. They mingled with their guests, shared stories, and made sure everyone was having a good time. The bride's laugh was infectious, and the groom's grin never wavered. It was clear that their joy overshadowed any minor mishap. As the night progressed, music began to play, and people took to the dance floor. The embarrassing episode with the lawn chair lady became just another story to laugh about later. A reminder of how unpredictable and human weddings can be. It's not always the picture-perfect moments that make memories, but the unexpected ones too. By the end of the night, as we all sat around a bonfire with bellies full of brisket and hearts full of good cheer, the incident was mostly forgotten. Instead, we talked about the beautiful vows, the heartfelt speeches, and the couple's first dance under the stars. Those were the moments that would stick with us long after the wet pants episode was relegated to a funny anecdote. Story 6 At my wedding, everything was going smoothly until it was time for the speeches. The atmosphere was warm and joyous with friends and family celebrating our special day. But then, out of nowhere, my best friend's mother decided to seize the microphone. She had a kind of determined look in her eye, the kind that makes you realize something unexpected is about to happen. With all eyes on her, she started talking about her son, my best friend, 
and his girlfriend of 10 years. Now, we all knew he wasn't a believer in merit. He'd made it clear over the years, countless times, that it just wasn't for him. His girlfriend, on the other hand, had always been a bit more traditional, secretly hoping he'd change his mind someday. My dear son, she began, voice shaking slightly with emotion. I've been praying every night that you will one day marry your wonderful girlfriend. You two are such a perfect match, living together all these years. I pray that God will lead you to the altar soon. The room fell silent, and you could almost feel the collective intake of breath. My best friend's face turned several shades of red, and his girlfriend's expression was a mix of shock and embarrassment. It was a heavy moment, and you could practically see the weight of her words pressing down on their relationship right there. I knew my friend well enough to see the storm brewing in his eyes. He felt ambushed, and his girlfriend, who had always been hopeful but patient, suddenly looked like her dreams were being laid bare for everyone to judge. It was a private matter, splashed out in public at the worst possible time. As the night went on, there was an awkward tension between them. My wife and I tried to enjoy our evening, but it was hard not to notice the strained conversations and forced smiles. Later, I found out that this public declaration had ignited a series of intense discussions between them. My friend felt cornered, pressured by his mother's expectations, and his girlfriend, although supportive, couldn't deny her own feelings and hopes that had been so bluntly exposed. Over the next few months, the tension didn't ease. They tried to work through it, but the underlying issue of marriage became a focal point of every argument. His steadfast refusal, now tainted by the public pressure, seemed even more rigid. And for her, the hope she had kept quietly within her heart had been pulled out and paraded around, making it impossible to ignore. Eventually, the pressure became too much, and they decided to part ways. It was a sad end to a long relationship that had weathered so many other storms, but couldn't survive this new strain. Looking back, it's clear that what should have been a joyous occasion for everyone had an unintended, devastating consequence for my best friend and his girlfriend. Weddings are supposed to be about love and celebration, but sometimes they also unearth truths and tensions that can't be easily resolved. Story 7 My sister's wedding was supposed to be this elegant, beautiful affair. It had all the makings of a perfect day. The ceremony was lovely, the decorations were top-notch, and the guest list was extensive. Although we originally thought there were around a thousand guests, it turned out to be fewer but still an overwhelming number, especially when most of them showed up just for the reception. Now, my dad is a great guy, but he has a bit of a reputation for overindulging, especially at family gatherings. That day was no exception. By the time the reception was in full swing, dad was well into the spirits, enjoying himself a little too much. It wasn't long before his jovial mood tipped over into the realm of the shit-faced. The reception hall was beautifully decorated, with twinkling fairy lights and elegant table settings. One of the centerpiece decorations was a series of large, beautiful potted plants, what we Aussies call candy plants. They were meant to add a touch of greenery to the indoor setting, making it feel lush and vibrant. At some point during the evening, Dad decided these candy plants looked a bit thirsty. Now you have to picture this. He's wobbling slightly, a goofy grin plastered on his face, and he's got a half-full glass of water. He stumbles over to one of these plants, right in front of a large crowd of guests. Without a second thought, he starts pouring the water into the pot, but his coordination is off, and he ends up spilling water everywhere. People started noticing, and a murmur of laughter and confusion spread through the crowd. Here's my dad, blissfully unaware, drenching the poor plant and the surrounding floor, while a growing audience looks on in amusement and a bit of embarrassment. The bride and groom, my sister and her new husband, exchanged looks that were somewhere between horror and hilarity. In typical dad fashion, he didn't seem to notice the scene he was causing. He just gave the plant a satisfied pat, as if he'd done it a great service and then wandered off. Probably in search of more drinks, the whole incident became a sort of running joke for the rest of the night. People would come up to me and ask if my dad was planning on watering any more plants or if we should hide all the greenery. Despite the momentary embarrassment, it added a certain charm to the evening. My sister and her husband, thankfully, are easygoing people and they managed to laugh it off. It became one of those stories that get funnier each time it's told. A classic family anecdote about the time Dad got so drunk he decided to play gardener at the wedding. In hindsight, it's one of those memories that stands out, not because of the perfect decor or the beautiful vows, but because it was so human and imperfect. It's a reminder that no matter how much you plan, some things will always go off script, and sometimes those moments are the ones you cherish the most. Story 8. I once attended a wedding where the single mother of the bride, let's call her Moby, managed to turn the bouquet toss into an unforgettable fiasco. The ceremony had been beautiful, with the bride glowing and the groom looking like the happiest man on earth. As we transitioned to the reception, the atmosphere was filled with joy and laughter, everyone soaking in the love and excitement. As the night wore on, it came time for the bouquet toss, 
a moment eagerly anticipated by many of the single women in the crowd. The bride, with a playful twinkle in her eye, took her place and prepared to throw the bouquet over her shoulder. The crowd gathered, a mix of hopeful participants and amused onlookers. Among them was a little girl, maybe five or six years old, who had been having the time of her life dancing and playing throughout the evening. The bride tossed the bouquet, and as luck would have it, it sailed through the air and landed perfectly in the little girl's tiny hands. Her face lit up with pure joy, clutching the flowers like they were the most precious treasure she'd ever held. But that happiness was short-lived. Standing behind her was the M.O.B., who clearly had her eyes on the prize. Without a moment's hesitation, she lunged forward, pulling the little girl backward in her haste. The poor child fell to the ground, the M.O.B. practically falling on top of her as she yanked the bouquet out of her hand. The little girl's cries pierced the festive air, and a collective gasp of horror echoed through the room. For a moment, everyone was stunned, not quite believing what they had just witnessed. Then, several guests rushed to the little girl's aid, comforting her and helping her up. The M.O.B., meanwhile, was celebrating her victory, bouquet in hand, cheering and oblivious to the chaos she had caused. She even had the audacity to claim that the little girl had told her it was okay, that she could have the bouquet because the girl just wanted to play bride, and they could easily make her another. The sight of the M.O.B. bouncing away, flowers in hand and a triumphant smile on her face, while the little girl stood there in tears, was enough to make everyone cringe. The bride and groom, who had been watching the whole thing unfold, looked mortified. It was supposed to be a fun, light-hearted tradition, but it had turned into a moment of sheer awkwardness and discomfort. The rest of the evening carried on, but that incident cast a shadow over the festivities. People couldn't stop talking about it, exchanging looks of disbelief and murmuring about the MOB's behavior. The little girl, thankfully, was soon smiling again, consoled by her family and friends, who made sure she felt loved and special, despite what had happened. In the days following the wedding, the story of the M.O.B.'s bouquet snatch became a sort of legend among the guests. It was retold with a mix of humor and incredulity, a stark reminder of how even the most joyous occasions can be marred by unexpected and selfish actions. Story 9. Our wedding day was meticulously planned, with every detail carefully considered to make it a perfect celebration. We had hired a professional photographer to capture all those precious moments and he came equipped with a full set of professional lights and equipment. Everything was set for a beautiful evening of memories and photographs. However, among the guests, there was an uninvited lady who had brought along her own little camera. She seemed to have an enthusiasm for photography, despite not being part of the official plan. Initially, I didn't think much of it. After all, it's not unusual for guests to snap their own pictures at weddings. But then the problem started. Our photographer's lights were set up to go off when they detected a flash, creating the perfect lighting for his shots. Unfortunately, this uninvited guest's camera had a flash, and it was triggering our photographer's lights every time she took a picture. What started as a minor annoyance quickly escalated into a significant disruption. Every time she snapped a photo, it set off the lights prematurely, ruining the carefully orchestrated lighting setup for the professional <laughs> shots. The photographer was doing his best to manage the situation, trying to work around the unexpected flashes and still capture the beautiful moments we had envisioned. He was visibly frustrated, but remained professional, attempting to adapt his timing and angles. At one point, the uninvited guest's flash stopped working. Instead of taking this as a sign to perhaps enjoy the event without her camera, she approached our photographer and asked him to help fix it. The audacity of the request was astounding. Here he was, juggling the chaos she was causing, and she expected him to drop everything to fix her camera. He politely declined, explaining that he was busy and needed to focus on his work, but she seemed undeterred and continued to fiddle with her camera. This went on throughout the night. Our photographer, to his credit, managed to get some amazing shots despite the interference. He was a true professional, never losing his cool and doing his best to ensure our wedding album would still be something special. Meanwhile, the rest of us tried to focus on the celebration. We danced, laughed, and enjoyed the company of our friends and family. Occasionally, I'd catch a glimpse of the uninvited guest wandering around, her camera flashing intermittently, and it took a lot of self-control to not let it ruin the mood. Story 10. My grandmother decided to remarry after my grandfather passed away, which was a touching and joyous occasion for our family. The wedding was held right after Sunday service at her local church, a place that had always been a cornerstone in her life. We all anticipated a heartfelt ceremony, followed by a nice, intimate reception with close family and friends. The ceremony was love. The pastor spoke beautifully about love and second chances, making everyone feel the warmth and affection my grandmother and her new husband shared. After the ceremony, the pastor made an announcement, inviting everyone from the congregation to stay and join the wedding reception, promising free food to all. At first, we thought it was a generous gesture, 
After all, the church community had always been supportive and kind to my grandmother. But we didn't anticipate what happened next. The congregation, eager at the mention of free food, swarmed the reception area like a scene from a movie. It felt like a stampede as people piled their plates high, leaving hardly anything behind. My family and I stood there, watching in disbelief as the food disappeared. It was supposed to be a celebration for my grandmother, a special meal shared with her closest family and friends. Instead, it turned into an impromptu church potluck, with guests who weren't even invited to the wedding grabbing seconds and thirds while we hadn't even had our firsts. I remember looking at the beautifully laid out buffet table, now picked clean, and seeing my grandmother's face. She tried to put on a brave smile, but I could see the disappointment in her eyes. It was heartbreak. My mom and a few aunts tried to salvage what they could, but it was too late. There was nothing left. We ended up making do with what little remained. Some salads, a few rolls, and bits of dessert that hadn't been completely ravaged. It wasn't the celebratory feast we had envisioned, but we tried to make the best of it, sitting together and sharing stories, laughter, and of course, the absurdity of what had just happened. Despite the unplanned turn of events, the love and joy of the occasion were still palpable. My grandmother, ever the optimist, joked that she was just happy everyone enjoyed themselves and that it was a wedding people would remember, and she was right. It's been years since that day, and it's still one of those stories that get brought up at family gatherings, always with a mix of laughter and a little bit of disbelief. In hindsight, it taught us a lot about the unpredictability of life and the importance of flexibility and humor. My grandmother's wedding day may not have gone as planned, but it was memorable and filled with the love of family and community, even if we didn't get to enjoy the food as we had hoped. Story 11. There's this one story from when I was in about sixth grade that I still laugh about with my friend to this day. It was one of those ordinary afternoons when I decided to head over to my friend's house, which was just a block away. My friend had this dog named Birch, a real Houdini of a dog who was notorious for escaping at the worst times. As I was approaching my friend's house, I saw Birch making his great escape, bolting out of the yard and sprinting full speed across the street. Instinctively, I took off after him, shouting for someone to grab him. It was like a scene out of a comedy. Birch was in top form, running like his tail was on fire. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Birch, in his infinite wisdom, decided to crash a wedding that was happening a couple of houses down. This wasn't just any wedding. It was an idyllic outdoor ceremony with a beautiful setup, guests seated in rows, and the bride making her grand entrance. Right at that perfect moment, Birch sprinted down the aisle, probably thinking he was the star of the show. As I followed, red-faced and out of breath, I could see the shocked faces of the wedding guests and the bewildered bride trying to keep her composure. I kept yelling, Someone grab that dog! The whole scene felt like it was happening in slow motion, with everyone too stunned to move. Thankfully, the groom was quick on his feet. In a heroic move, he lunged forward and managed to catch Birch just before he could create even more chaos. I finally reached them profusely apologizing and explaining the situation. The groom, surprisingly, was good-natured about the whole ordeal. He handed Birch over to me with a chuckle and wished me luck. I hurried back to my friend's house with Birch in tow, still a bit embarrassed but also relieved that the situation hadn't been worse. When I told my friend what happened, we couldn't stop laughing. It became one of those legendary stories that we'd bring up anytime someone mentioned weddings or dogs. Even now, years later, Whenever we get together, we reminisce about Birch's wedding craft. It's a reminder of how unpredictable and hilarious life can be, especially when you're just trying to do a simple thing like visiting a friend. We've often wondered what the wedding guests thought of the whole incident, and we hope it became a funny anecdote for them too. Story 12. Our wedding was a grand affair, filled with all the traditional elements you'd expect. We had a large guest list, elegant decorations, and the whole event was carefully planned to be picture perfect. But, as with many weddings, not everything went according to plan. During our first dance, with the photographer snapping away and the videographer capturing every moment, one of my husband's old high school friends decided it was the perfect time to interrupt. He came right up to us on the dance floor, tapped my husband on the shoulder, and loudly announced, Hey man, we're going to take off now. The interruption was jarring completely ruining that special moment. Our videographer had to work some serious magic to edit that out of the final video, and even then, it was clear something had gone awry. As if that weren't enough, my husband's biker aunt, who had come into town for the wedding and was staying at his mom's house, brought an unwelcome guest, Scobbies. The day after the wedding, we learned that everyone in the house, including my mother-in-law and two sisters-in-law, had contracted scabies from her. It added an unpleasant layer of stress to what should have been a joyous post-wedding period. And then there was the theft. After our honeymoon, I discovered that a member of the venue staff had rifled through the purses of every woman in the bridal party. All the purses had been stashed in a closet for safekeeping, but nearly $400 in cash had been stolen. We immediately complained to the venue owner, 
only to be met with a shrug and an infuriating response. Three of their staff members had quit the day after our wedding, so there was no way to know who had done it. Despite these setbacks, the wedding had its beautiful moments too. I remember the look in my husband's eyes during our vows, the laughter shared with friends and family, and the heartfelt speeches that brought tears to many eyes. Our friends and family danced the night away, creating memories that we still cherish. The chaos didn't end with the wedding day, though. Sorting out the aftermath of the Scobbies outbreak was a nightmare. Treatments had to be arranged for everyone affected, and it took weeks for things to return. The incident became a notorious family story, often retold with a mix of horror and humor. The theft left a sour taste as well. The feeling of violation, knowing someone had gone through our personal belongings, was hard to shake. We had to write off the loss and move on though it was a bitter pill to swallow. The venue's nonchalant response only added to our frustration, but there was little we could do without knowing the culprit. Story 13. I was a bridesmaid in a wedding that was quite the spectacle, featuring an extremely pregnant bride and an extremely drunk groom. Surprisingly, they weren't the problem at all. The real issue was a family drama that unfolded around the bride's decision to have both her divorced parents walk her down the aisle. This seemingly sweet gesture set off a chain of events that no one could have anticipated. The bride's stepmother took incredible offense at being excluded from this special moment. She pitched a fit that could only be compared to a hangry toddler's meltdown. She ranted and raved, making it clear to everyone that she felt slighted and disrespected. Her behavior added a layer of stress to an already emotionally charged day. Despite the tension, the bride was determined to proceed with her original plan. As she took her place at the start of the aisle, flanked by her mother and father, it should have been a touching, albeit slightly crowded moment. But thanks to the stepmother's tantrum, it turned into a chaotic procession. The bride, who only had two arms, was essentially dragging her parents down the aisle. They all struggled to keep pace and avoid tripping over her veil and train, creating a scene that was more awkward than sweet. The ceremony itself went off without any major hitches after that, but the reception was another story. The stepmother, having apparently decided to drown her sorrows in alcohol, got completely plastered. She then proceeded to make an absolute fool of herself on the dance floor. She was grinding on any of the groomsmen who came within a foot of her, to their obvious discomfort. Her antics became the unfortunate highlight of the evening. Meanwhile, the bride and groom tried to focus on their celebration. The bride, glowing both from pregnancy and the joy of the day, was a picture of patience and grace despite everything going on around her. The groom, although extremely drunk, seemed blissfully unaware of the drama, smiling and laughing his way through the night. As bridesmaids, we tried our best to shield the newlyweds from the worst of the stepmother's behavior. We intervened as much as we could, guiding her away from the dance floor when she got too out of hand and attempting to redirect the groomsmen who were unfortunate enough to be in her path. Despite the chaos, there were moments of genuine joy and celebration. The speeches were heartfelt, the food was delicious, and there was a lot of laughter. The bride and groom shared their first dance under a canopy of twinkling lights, and for a brief moment, it felt like everything was perfect. After the wedding, the bride and groom, along with close family and friends, often reminisced about the day. The story of the stepmother's meltdown and her dance floor antics became one of those legendary wedding tales that everyone laughs about later. It was a reminder of how unpredictable weddings can be and how sometimes the most absurd moments become the most memorable. Story 14. Weddings are supposed to be joyous celebrations, but sometimes they can dredge up old family drama. This was certainly the case at my wedding. To give you a bit of backstory, my paternal grandmother was not invited to the wedding. She had allowed her brother to abuse my dad when he was a child, leading to severe PTSD that took him years to manage. He even had to go away for treatment for a month. Adding insult to injury, one of my aunts, who wasn't invited either, had the gall to call my dad a liar despite his long-standing role as a minister for almost 40 years. The day of my wedding arrived, and everything was going smoothly. My bride looked beautiful, and the venue was perfect, but I had a nagging feeling in the back of my mind that my grandmother and aunt might pull something. True to form, they showed up, uninvited and unannounced, just as we were about to start the ceremony. My grandmother, dragging my aunt along, tried to walk right into the church as if they had every right to be there. I had anticipated something like this and had prepped my groomsmen just in case. When I saw them approaching, I stepped outside to meet them. Trying to keep my cool, I calmly explained to my grandmother that she wasn't invited and that she needed to leave. This didn't go over well at all. She exploded, going on about how I was her firstborn grandchild and that no one could stop her from attending a church service. Her shouting began to draw attention, and I could see the looks of concern from other guests. I subtly nodded to my groomsmen, who immediately stepped in to block her entrance. This only made her more furious. She screamed, she cursed, and then, in a fit of rage, she spat on one of my groomsmen. At that point, I was beyond done with her antics. I'm not one for violence, 
and I don't condone hitting women. But in that moment, I would have let her get punched in the face if it meant she'd leave. My groomsmen, bless them, kept their composure. One of them firmly told her that if she didn't leave immediately, they would call the police. This finally seemed to get through to her. With a final huff, she turned and stormed off, dragging my aunt with her. Once they were gone, I took a deep breath and returned to the ceremony. My bride, who had seen the whole thing from inside, gave me a reassuring smile. The rest of the wedding went off without a hitch, filled with love, laughter, and the support of true family and friends. Story 15. I once attended a wedding that ended with a unique twist, a boat ride under the majestic Mackinac Bridge. It was the perfect capstone to a beautiful day. After the ceremony and reception, we all boarded the boat for a light dinner and to enjoy the wedding cake while taking in the breathtaking views of the bridge lit up against the night sky. But things took a turn when two of the couple's friends decided to hook up. At first, it might have seemed harmless enough, but their choice of location and their level of intoxication made it anything but discreet. They positioned themselves at the very front of the boat, a well-lit area in full view of everyone else seated on the benches. Their attempt at discreet was a complete failure. They were incredibly drunk. And the girl, using the guy as a rebound from a recently ended relationship, was especially unrestrained. The sloppy, loud kissing and grinding were impossible to ignore. They seemed oblivious to the fact that their drunken escapade was on full display for all the guests who were trying their best to look away or pretend it wasn't happening. The bride was particularly disgusted. She had envisioned this boat ride as a serene, romantic end to her wedding day not as a backdrop for a public display of drunken affection. Her expression of mortification was hard to miss. She exchanged horrified glances with her new husband, both clearly appalled by the spectacle. Guests began murmuring, some trying to divert their attention by starting conversations, others casting disapproving looks toward the front of the boat. The atmosphere, which had been so joyous and celebratory, grew tense and uncomfortable. The bride and groom had put so much effort into planning this perfect day and to have it end with such a tasteless display was disheartening. Eventually, a few of the more sober and tactful guests decided to step in. They approached the couple, gently but firmly suggesting that maybe it was time to tone it down or find a more private spot. The couple, in their drunken state, seemed confused and a bit indignant, but eventually stumbled away from the front of the boat, much to the relief of everyone else. As the boat continued its journey under the bridge, the mood slowly began to recover. People resumed their conversations, trying to shake off the awkwardness of what had just transpired. The bride and groom managed to find some solace in the presence of their friends and family, who rallied around them to ensure the rest of the evening went smoothly. Story 16. Working at a restaurant with an awesome patio often means being part of some truly memorable events. And this particular wedding was no exception. Our patio, with its charming lights and cozy atmosphere, was the perfect setting for a wedding ceremony and reception. The day started off beautifully, with the bride and groom looking ecstatic and guests enjoying themselves amidst the picturesque backdrop. The festivities went on smoothly. Laughter, dancing, and a lot of food and drinks. Everyone seemed to be having a great time. And as staff, we were happy to see our venue being part of such a joyous occasion. The evening was full of toasts, clinking glasses, and heartfelt speeches. It felt like everything was going perfect. However, as the night drew to a close and it came time to settle the bill, Things took an unexpected turn. The tab for the evening had come to $3,000, a reasonable amount considering the lavish spread and the continuous flow of drinks. But when the moment came to pay, suddenly no one had their credit cards. The situation quickly became awkward, with the bride and groom looking flustered and the guests starting to murmur among themselves. We approached the bride and groom, gently reminding them of the bill. Their expressions turned from joy to panic, as they admitted they had forgotten to bring any form of payment. The tension in the air was palpable. It was clear they hadn't planned this part through, and we were left in a tricky situation. Our manager had to step in. After some hushed discussions, we decided to hold a couple of their friends back while the bride went to fetch her cart. It felt like an eternity before she returned. And during that time, the atmosphere went from celebratory to tense. The friends who stayed behind were clearly uncomfortable, and the staff had to keep things cordial while making sure they didn't leave. When the bride finally returned, she looked stressed but relieved. She handed over her card, and we processed the payment. However, when it came to tipping, they left only 10%. Given the size of the bill and the effort our staff had put in to make the day special, it was a disappointing end to what had been a wonderful event. The situation left a bitter taste. Our team had worked hard to ensure everything went smoothly, and to end on such a note felt unjust. The incident became a talking point among the staff for days. We couldn't help but feel a mix of frustration and sympathy. The couple had clearly been overwhelmed and unprepared, but it didn't excuse the lack of proper planning and the paltry tip. Despite this hiccup, 
the experience taught us valuable lessons about handling such situations in the future. We made it a point to ensure clear communication about payment expectations for large events and emphasized the importance of proper planning with our clients. Story 17. There was this wedding I attended that had all the makings of a perfect day until one moment turned it into an unforgettable story for all the wrong reasons. The ceremony was beautiful. The bride looked stunning in her dress, and the weather was just right. Everything was set for a series of picturesque moments. After the ceremony, we moved to the garden for the wedding photos. The setting was idyllic, with a beautiful fountain as the centerpiece. The photographer had everyone arranged just so, capturing the happiness and elegance of the day. That's when the bride's brother-in-law, who had a reputation for being a bit of a jokester, decided to take things too far. While everyone was lining up for a group photo, he suddenly got this mischievous look in his eye. Before anyone could react, he gave the bride a playful but forceful push, sending her tumbling straight into the fountain. The gasp from the crowd was audible as she splashed into the water, her beautiful white dress now drenched and clinging to her. Chaos erupted. The bridesmaids, who were nearby, immediately sprang into action. They rushed to her aid, pulling her out of the water and guiding her to the nearest restroom. Inside, it was a flurry of activity. An army of bridesmaids and some quick-thinking guests armed themselves with hair dryers, towels, and anything else they could find to help dry her off. It was like an emergency response team in full swing, trying to salvage the situation. Despite their best efforts, the bride's dress was still wet and wrinkled, and she had the unfortunate smell of an aquarium clinging to her for the rest of the night. The scent of pond water mixed with the lingering aroma of the flowers she had fallen into. She was a good sport about it, managing to laugh through her tears, but you could see the frustration and disappointment in her eyes. The rest of the evening carried on, but the incident cast a long shadow. Guests kept their distance from the brother-in-law, who was sheepishly apologetic, yet clearly not grasping the full extent of his actions. The bride and groom tried to make the best of it, but the photos and memories of their special day were now marked by this unplanned plunge. Despite everything, the wedding continued with dancing, toasts, and celebration. The bride, ever resilient, decided to embrace the mishap, even making a joke about her unique wedding fragrance during her speech. It was a testament to her character that she managed to maintain her grace and humor through such an ordeal. Story 18. Weddings are always filled with toasts and speeches that can range from heartfelt to downright hilarious. And mine was no exception. My mother's toast stood out as one of the most memorable and side-splittingly funny moments of the day. As she took the microphone, everyone quieted down ready to hear her words of wisdom and love. She started with a mischievous smile, her eyes twinkling with a mix of affection and amusement. Every gray hair on my head is from that girl right there, she said, pointing at me. The room erupted in laughter, everyone knowing full well my reputation for being a bit of a handful. She continued, good luck, Ben, addressing my new husband. I hope this one lasts. Now, in all fairness, this was my third wedding, so the humor wasn't lost on anyone. I thought it was hilarious and appreciated my mom's ability to keep things light and fun. The guests laughed along, and the mood was set for a joyous evening. But that wasn't the only wedding toast that left a lasting impression. At a friend's wedding, the best man decided to drop a bombshell during his speech. The couple had recently had a baby, and it had been a topic of much celebration and joy. The best man, perhaps not fully thinking through the consequences of his words, revealed that the baby was not the groom's biological child. A hush fell over the room as the gravity of his statement sank in. It turned out only a handful of people knew this, and now the secret was out in the open, making for quite the scandalous moment. The groom's face went through a range of emotions, from shock to anger to eventual acceptance. The bride looked mortified, tears welling up in her eyes. The initial shockwave was palpable, and whispers started circulating among the guests. It was the kind of revelation that could easily overshadow the entire wedding day. Yet, amidst the tension, Something remarkable happened. The groom, after a few moments of stunned silence, stood up and took the microphone. He spoke about love, forgiveness, and the strength of their relationship. He reassured everyone that despite the unexpected revelation, their bond was unbreakable. For both stories, despite the rocky moments, the couples are still together. My husband Ben and I laugh about my mom's toast to this day. It's become a cherished anecdote, a reminder of our ability to embrace humor and resilience in our relationship. As for my friends... Their wedding day scandal eventually settled down. They worked through the complexities and emerged stronger. Their love deepened by the trials they faced together. Story 19. Weddings are often a time for family gatherings, and with family comes the unpredictable charm of certain relatives. I have one such relative, my mother, 
who has a knack for turning any event into a memorable one, sometimes for all the wrong reasons. At my cousin's wedding, I decided to sit next to my mother. Despite knowing her tendency to say the most outrageous things at the most inopportune times, I thought, maybe this time she'd behave. As usual, I was wrong. The ceremony started beautifully, with the bride looking radiant as she began her walk down the aisle. The air was filled with the quiet awe and reverence that accompanies such a moment. Then, just as my cousin passed by us, my mother leaned in close to me. I could feel the anticipation building, hoping against hope that she would keep whatever comment she had to herself. But no, she whispered to me in a voice that carried much further than she realized. Do you think her boobs are real? The whisper was anything but quiet. Heads from three rows ahead of us whipped around to see who had dared to break the solemnity with such a crude question. My face turned several shades of red, and I desperately wished I could sink into the floor. The bride, thankfully, didn't seem to hear. But the guests who did were now exchanging glances and barely suppressed giggles. I shot my mother a look that was a mix of disbelief and exasperation. She, completely unfazed, raised an eyebrow as if to say, What? I'm just curious. It was classic her, never missing a chance to stir the pot with her off-the-cuff remarks. The rest of the ceremony, for me at least, was spent in a state of embarrassed vigilance, praying she wouldn't say anything else. Despite my mortification, the wedding proceeded without further incident from our corner. The bride and groom exchanged their vows, and the ceremony concluded with applause and cheers from the gathered friends and family. At the reception, the story of my mother's loud whisper had already begun to circulate. Some found it amusing, others were scandalized, but everyone had an opinion. My cousin, the bride, eventually heard about it and, to her credit, laughed it off. She knew my mother well enough to understand that her special brand of commentary was just part of the packet. In hindsight, Moments like these have a way of adding unexpected humor to family stories. As much as I cringe at my mother's lack of a filter, I also recognize that these are the stories that get retold at family gatherings, becoming part of our collective memory. They remind us of the quirks and idiosyncrasies that make each family unique.